All right. Welcome to another Woods Report. Okay. We on time today. Yeah, I want to start hopefully being on time all the time. Um, I want to do a reaction because we both saw documentaries. And for mine, I want to do a reaction to hear what people said and then react to it. Okay. Um, it's um, Quiet on the Set. If y'all know, that's the Nickelodeon um, documentary mm-hmm. with all of these um, abusers. I, I don't want to say the name. Don't say the name. Abusers. I don't even know the name. Yes. Yeah, but I meant the words. Abusers that. Oh, um, yeah, violated. Yeah, the that, that kids. So. Um, there you go. When you watch the documentary, you're like, what was Nickelodeon doing the this thing, whole time? But you know what? When I'm learning and you can, if people can correct me if I'm wrong, because I know people tend to listen to our show and go, you're wrong. That's not the right spelling. You said the name wrong. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Our disclaimer, we're going to start putting that on our show. We're not a... I'm not... That's already We're not... A, I mean, just, hey, we're not yeah. a news. We're just... But it's already oh, it's about there. opinion. So who cares I what know, people say? I know. People still say crazy stuff. Why do you care? But um, I, care I think you're saying the laws change now where there's no so many years can run out when a person wants to come forth and say someone was violated not for or that. whatever. Could, it's no Certain law. things. No. Right, that particular thing. For that, there is no... Um, that's what I'm saying. Certain yeah. things. Because some things, the statutory time is... Yeah, not lapse. that. Yeah. Okay. And... I'm thinking a lot of people are taking advantage of that as they get older or they're older now. And there probably may be some reasons for them to come forth and say, you know what? It wasn't so good at Nickelodeon. And we all go, oh, man. you, And then you don't even want to hear the like a Disney story or um, the, a different child, anything dealing with children related stuff or church. You're like, oh, man. But. You I, I applaud oh, them. Man. I applaud him, whoever it is, for coming forward. All right, so let me look and Nothing's see. Nothing's perfect, so we know when you're dealing with people. Quiet on the set. And with kids, you know, you can easily manipulate kids. They don't know yeah, nothing. That's so that's where, if you were that type of person, I don't want to use the words, the P word, you would go to a children's set. Oh, you can't even use that word either? I don't want to try it, because they'll... Uh, oh, okay. YouTube will ban everything. Okay. So... And we don't have to. They know what we're talking about. Okay. So you don't, and if you that type of person, you would go to a children's set because that's where you could do all the stuff you're that you want to. You're in that wanna, environment. Of yeah, you're in that environment. So this is somebody, Um, her name is Jay. She did a review of um, Quiet on the Set. And I just want to get a reaction. I want to watch this it. This is a show that came no, on? No, no, she's just doing a review. Of this the, is her show called Quiet on the Set. No, no. <clears throat> Quiet on the Set is the documentary. Oh, for Nickelodeon. The name of it. Okay. And she's doing a review of Quiet on oh, the Set. Oh, okay. Okay. Quiet on the Set on HBO Max, episodes one through four. What's up, y'all? It is Jay Shanice back with another video, back with another review. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. Let's get into Quiet on the Set, baby. I be all over the place. I'm loud. If you're new here, here we go. Drake Bell, baby, I felt so bad for his daddy. I mean, I feel bad for him too, but oh, that broke my heart with his daddy because that daddy knew that Brian the Pickle Man or whatever they called him was a weirdo and he wanted him away from his son and he was trying to protect his son. But see, what they do is manipulate these kids. He got into Drake's head telling him that, you know, your daddy shouldn't be your manager. Most of these people's parents are their manager, especially when their child stars. What do you... So the same thing with like Usher or Beyonce or whatever. They always start off with a parent as their manager and then people get talked to them and say, you know, get rid of them. They, they you know, are too involved. And the, Drake's father, this is, Drake is one of the kids that was on um, Nickelodeon who had a show. Okay. And he was one of the ones that they, that the Brian guy went after. Um, and his father started noticing stuff. Like he would just notice that a lot of that Brian guy was touchy feely all the time, and he was just like, "Okay, it's all right. You're just too touchy feely. Should I make some of it or not?" And then when he would say something to people on the set, they said, "You just homophobic because Brian is gay, and you know gay people like to you know touch and." And so you're homophobic. You have a problem with him touching your son. He was like, "Maybe I don't have a problem. I don't know." He they was just making him feel like. 
he was talking too much. Mm-hmm. And then Brian, the guy would try to always spend time with um, Drake and let's go to Disney World and stuff like that. And his father would always be like, that's just odd that a you know, 40 year old man is always trying to hang around with kids and stuff. They say so, that about Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, Michael Jackson too. Mm-hmm. So just parents is just, he was the type that would say something. Mm-hmm. And so they started saying, well, Brian started saying, you need to probably drop your father because he, he going to mess it up for you. And the way they made kids feel back then and parents too, if you complain or if you say something, we'll just get another kid. Yeah, we don't have true. to have your kid. You don't have to keep him. Yeah. So okay. What do you mean, and talking about his daddy was stealing his money, baby. That pickle man got into that boy's head, t- so that boy be- could become his victim. Oh my God, that was so heartbreaking. But weirdo, weirdo, and for all them people to write a letter, Alan Thick. Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> don't you ain't writing a letter from the grave. Now, when um Drake <laughs> from the grave, when Drake uh <laughs> she funny, when Drake um decided to um come out and say that this is Brian was violating him, uh-huh. um Brian he went to court and um he was found guilty, and it was time for him to um be sentenced. A lot of celebrities and a lot of people, producers and directors and stuff wrote letters on the, the 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 guy who was violating Drake on his behalf. Oh, was taken up for him. Saying maybe it was a stress or just like, a lot like if of... They were taking, if they were writing letters for uh, Bill Cosby. Yeah. Like, but then nobody wrote no letters for Bill Cosby. <laughs> but everybody was writing letters for Brian. Uh-huh. And um, I was surprised at that Alan Thicke uh, and the mom that was on the show. They both wrote letters. Now, since this has come out, Alan Thicke is, you know, he's gone. But the mom said, it wasn't presented to me that way when I wrote the letter. So I guess people saying, okay, well, let's give her the benefit. We don't know what was presented to these people to write a letter. But they shouldn't be writing letters anyway. That's what I say. accused because it's allegedly. It's like right now with Diddy. Mm -hmm. I'm not writing a letter for Mm -hmm. Diddy. Mm -hmm. Even if somebody said, well, you don't know all the facts. Mm -hmm. Or if you don't know all the facts, don't write a letter. Right. Exactly. So maybe because this was 2004, people were people different People need to then. be very careful with that. Because even when you, you made a comment yesterday. We're in 24 now. You can't do that. You made a comment yesterday, too, that made me kind of go, oh, my God, you're right. But it's, in a sense, it can be debated. When a family member is said a family oh, member. Oh, yeah, yeah. You want to stick up for your family member because you truly, truly believe in them and trust them. Right. But there are family members who can still lie. Oh, yeah. Or fabricate. Yeah. yeah. So that's still scary when you got a family member because you still got to go, I don't believe my child or my son or my whatever would. Right. But let's see where this goes. Right. You got to. But keep people it open. understand family members. I know. I know. But if you're not a family member, yeah. don't write no letters she for nobody. She should letter. Come out how it was presented right. to her. So, okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was years ago. So he was he he R.I.P. I don't know if I want to say R.I.P. because you were supporting a person that wasn't right. It was doing kids wrong. You don't want to take him to Disneyland, want to take him to his stuff, quit living with his daddy, start living with his mama. But then his mama was too lazy to do what she was supposed to be doing, which was taking her son to everywhere he needed to go because you was living off of his money. Let's keep it real. And then you ended up he ended up getting Okay, we ain't gonna say the word, See, but y'all know what I mean by this creepy man that is friends with the what is his name, John Wayne Casey, writing letters and being his pen pal. And she- yeah, so <laughs> it was a lot of stuff. Yeah, a lot of stuff. Oh my goodness. This guy, um, everybody liked him on the set. Mm-hmm. Even today, some of the kids are like, "Well, he never did anything right, to us." Right, one of those, right? Um, and they was like surprised to find out that this had I came think that out. Lady, whatever her name was, that was she was an actress, and she said back then she didn't. Oh, okay. Have any issues? But right. I, I still go, you know, yeah. towards how you feel. So he would invite. He had a, a party, a birthday party, or something at his house, and all the kids was there, whatever. And then one of the kids, I think, when you got something going on, yeah, keep going. Oh, one of the kids went to um in his room or something. Oh no! And he had like a. Uh, that that balloon, that picture of John Wayne Gacy as a clown holding balloons, mm. and he was like, "Where you get that from?" 
He said, oh, I'm pen pals with John Wayne Gacy. Mm -hmm. Now, right that's then and there, right everybody there. was like, that's kind of odd. Red but nobody, flag. nobody said anything. And I thought about that. I said, you know what? Back in the day, even was before. This after he was be accused. Yeah, he was in jail. See, no. And I thought about it. I said, back in the day, but this is like 2000. But I know back in our time, we didn't say nothing. Things was weird or off or we would just, just be like, don't go off. over that person's house exactly. or stay away from that person. But I'm thinking in, we didn't put two and two together on some stuff. But I'm thinking in 2000, mm. I'm thinking this generation, they should know to say something. This was around 2000. So this is even before. Now, see, now we got social media now. So you can't get away with all this stuff now. So. Exactly. But that was odd. But to be connected with John Wayne Gacy, to me. Yeah. yeah. You go got a painting from him? Are you serious? You let your son walk into that trap and said he woke up and the man was doing things. Baby, I said, oh, no. He's like, I don't know how to describe it. Just know they was terrible. I said, oh, hell no. See, the 90s and the late 80s was something kind of different. Why were y'all not doing background checks, Nickelodeon? That got me looking at Nickelodeon different, okay? Why are you not doing background checks on these people? Why was he around children? He should have, well, I guess he wasn't, he wasn't that until after this incident. But he thought that that boy was his boyfriend. That is somebody's damn child that you're touching on. He was all around all them kids, all them young boys. Did you see Leo Di DiCaprio? I was like, oh! Yeah, they were showing videos of Leo DiCaprio. And he was like doing all that with him and stuff too. So you wonder now, all of these people that are older now, who were younger back then, how many of them were probably violated and they don't say nothing? They talked about that on The View. Was Leonardo, he just never said anything? The women had mixed views on The View with people coming forth who either knew something or was ex had experienced it versus people who don't come forth because they, 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 for whatever reason, they may have seen it or have experienced mm -hmm. it. So the women had weighed on them both sides. Joy feels whistleblower. You did, if he touched you yeah. or if he, you see it, say something. Yeah. Sonny felt the same way. Uh, Sarah was like, you don't bully, you don't force someone to come forth right. if they are still going through healing or whatever. You got to understand they're going through something. And you don't put a mark on them saying you got to come forth because he messed with you too, didn't he? Right. So they all had different views on that. So I kind of see what she's saying. If Lee, if, if he was, if he has some issues, he's not coming forward. Right. I don't, I don't think you should make anybody come forward. Right. But I think that if anybody comes <sighs> forward, that's it. You only need one person. Yeah. I mean, for me, it, one person is enough, but I do understand the more. Right. Oh, God, it builds the case even bigger yeah. and stronger. Yeah. Yeah. And this guy, Drake, he didn't know if he came forward, he knew he wouldn't. They would get rid of him and bring yeah, another kid. And yeah. That's how they do. That's why I was saying Hollywood, even with going with this um, thing with P. Diddy, um, it, if the, the stories are true, which they probably are, we don't know, allegedly, the music industry is the same way. Mm -hmm. They threaten you that if you don't go along, if you don't do such and such, then you won't have a career or you'll never work like in this town again. Off. You get blackballed. Mm -hmm. But 2024... Everybody getting exposed. And they saying that if what they saying is true about Diddy, it's going to be athletes and celebrities and politicians. It's like that lady that had the list of that man who who got, who got did his problems yep, in prison. Yep, Epstein. That lady who had high profile names. High profile. They came out when they so were So they saying that if this is true, then, you know. But, you know, if he pays what he needs to pay, because, you know, he got money, so... Mm -hmm. As long as he keep paying what he need to pay, maybe they'll get him out of it. That's why Trump gets out of everything. Huh. So let's see. He not trying to touch our Romeo. Your, and he was just rubbing on his elbow. I said, oh, he creepy. I don't understand why you want to mess with children when you could go get you a grown man that's willing to do what you need him to do. For real. Like, I feel so bad for Drake and his daddy. Okay, because that was my jaw was on the floor he was close to his dad when he got into the business he was little and there were some things we saw him in i didn't know that was him he was little though mm -hmm. 
He was on Seinfeld too on the episode. I was like, oh, that's him. You hear he was younger. Seinfeld? No, no, Drake was on Seinfeld. No, they've had a, a, a episode yeah, with a child. Yeah, they've had kids. Okay. And he was um on one episode of Seinfeld. And when I go back and look at, it, I go, oh, that is him. So he didn't want to lose his career. And so that's what a lot of these guys do. Like I said, they she's saying what get a, a doll. They don't want that. They want it's the, about power. That's what it's always been about. Because they could the lose R that. word and all Cause, of that. Cause it's sad, been about power. But the sad thing about it is that even that person in power um violating them, if they tell right. they're in trouble. If they lash out at them, they're in trouble. They're in trouble. Yeah. So, so he felt he had to take it. Just gosh, those years. One for the team. And then one day, uh, well, I said his dad was on the set all the time, but then they he made him get rid of his dad as his manager and like go with the mom who was more stupid mm -hmm. and didn't really. She let him stay over there at his house and she just didn't catch on. Now to they nothing. probably feel bad, don't they? Well, let one day he just went off. I'm just gonna fast forward. He went off and um started yelling at his mom and he told his mom what was happening to him and she couldn't believe it and she called the police. The police came over and they wanted him to get that guy on tape saying what he had did and he was able to do that. You know how he said he felt really? like it was a, a movie scene where they have you taped up I mean, and all oh, the, wow. and he said, I, I just don't feel comfortable. I, he was talking to the guy, Brian, I don't feel comfortable and, and you know, I just, and the guy was spilling it, just saying everything. So they had him on tape. That's why it wasn't hard to convict him. Wow. They had him on tape. That's so, the first time, though, that he was convicted. Is this the second time? No, around? no, this is the first time. Oh, so. okay. 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 Well, why did I want to fight his mama? Why even take him on if you wasn't going to do what the daddy had been doing since the boy? Like, are you? She was like, what's going on? So she told his mom, like, I'm taking him to a therapist. But he still didn't say nothing to the therapist. But then one day. I think after this fool was trying to say he wanted to be on the Drake and Josh show and play his dad, that's when he told his mama See. about everything. So they went to the police, which his mama did do right by that. I'm a, you know, but she should have been 10 toes down. If you think you can replace the daddy because you and the daddy ain't together, then you should have been doing what the daddy was doing and not depending on some man you don't know. Okay. So they recorded him. He, I guess he was confessing to it and was like, are we being recorded? Or if you got to ask if you're being recorded, then you probably being recorded, stupid. Okay? <laughs> Work with kids. Now. Cody and Disney ran a background check and was like, oh. It was, he was convicted, right? This Brian guy was convicted. And I think he got like 17 months or something like that. And that was it. He gets out and he gets another job on another Nickelodeon show. With kids. With kids. Nickelodeon hired them again. Okay. Hmm. And they were like, now. they were like, think, don't come after him no more. Come after him and Nickelodeon. So you, we were you've like, let a, you've let a felon or someone who's been convicted of something come back. With children. Come back. Right. With children. And work with children. Now, if it was, an, I, really got some if it was just this case, then people would go, that's, that's dumb enough. No, they had a couple of them. They had a couple of people who were um, convicted. Skin is peeling. Mm. They had a couple of them who um, kids were convicted. I mean, people were convicted. And they working on at Nickelodeon. And one guy, they said, um, he actually brought the kid who he was do doing that to on the set a couple of times. <laughs> this Nickelodeon. We didn't know all this was going on at Nickelodeon back then. Was this what, early 2000? Was yeah, this? this was early 2000. And we didn't know. They was doing a lot of um, sexual innuendos in the shows with the kids. Somebody sucking on somebody's toes. One black guy said he was on there on uh, all that. They put peanut butter on him and had animals, the dogs come in and lick it all off. He felt, this is uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. They would do stuff like that. This Brian guy, the they one that was convicted, the they called him the pickle guy. He would walk around, he had all these pickles. And it was like the the terminology and the stuff that they was using. As adults, we know what so they... So maybe they were like him. That's they what, tolerated that environment because they were to alike. And that's what people... That's the thing. See, I always put everything back to Trump. Everybody knows that. Mm -hmm. This is why Trump is winning... In, in in November, 
because people feel like Hollywood you represent me and music no no well, has been over sexualized yeah. and so we got this now these people are saying they want everything um uh white washed and we want to take out any of that we don't want any of that you guys are putting all these little sexual innuendo things in and we want to get rid of all of that because you guys have been over sexualizing kids you know, they don't like transgenders or mm -hmm. any of that. So that's my thing is, it's like, because it's been going on so long like this in Nickelodeon, now you've got the other half, the other which side, is trying extreme. to come in and do extreme. Like no um, trans, no transgender. Um, like we don't want any sex uh, or any, drag, no. Drag queens doing no drag in queens. front of kids. Exactly. Okay. No gay teachers, no nothing. Because it's like, we, we went through this period with Nickelodeon, mm -hmm. now we're going into a whole nother purist yeah, period. Really, really careful. careful. Exactly. They don't want situations like this Nickelodeon to happen again, though. Right. So but you, you don't have to go the extreme. To go the extreme. That's know. what I'm saying. Yep. All right. Oh, no. Oh, no, sir. You got to get out of here. Like, why would you think it was okay for you to work with kids? Again. Because you was telling lies, making it sound like he tempted you or whatever he was telling people. Because that's what the person said, that she was sorry she ever wrote that letter. She was told lies and all that. So, and I'm just like, OMG. And this is before Drake and Josh got, I think, did they start filming or they hadn't started filming? And Dan meeting, there was big suit people in there. And they were like, who did he do? Like, who, who did this happen to? They didn't even know. I don't even think they found out till just now, like everybody else, that it was Drake Bell. But Dan Snyder did ask him if he was okay. Is there anything he needed? I'm like, yeah, you had to give him a show. It was because of you that this creepy man with the pickles even worked here. He put a pickle in the glory hole, which is inappropriate because kids don't know what glory holes are. And then you got everybody loves Raymond eating the damn pickle that he put through the glory hole. So everybody loves Raymond appeared on um, Raymond, the guy who plays Raymond appeared on that on all that or one of those shows and the pickle guy like i said we are, all adults know what that pickle represents mm -hmm. and it's almost like a hidden joke inside of these little kids shows mm -hmm. so he takes the pickle and sticks it through a hole and then raymond grabs the pickle and bites on it and like yeah so people was like Wow. This is Nickelodeon. It's almost like a very, very soft porn. Yeah, but they was doing stuff, and and Dan Snyder, uh, that's why I said Dan Snyder, who used to be on, um, um, he was on that first show with um, Robin Givens, head of the class. Remember, he was the fat guy in head of the class. Oh. Uh, remember head of the class? I remember head of the class. I know. I just don't remember characters. Robin Givens, mm -hmm. okay, they was high school students. Mm -hmm. He was the fat guy on there. Then they allowed him to go on and do all these shows on Nickelodeon. Wow. So he had like a perverted mind. So he would always slide in stuff. It's like, why? And I guess it would make sense if they are like that with young kids to be in an atmosphere with young kids. And then they didn't, he didn't really like women on the set or writers. They hired these two women, Dan Snyder, um, the fat guy on our head of the class. Um, they said he was a tyrant. He was horrible. He would yell at people and scare people. When he walk in the room, people would be like, oh, no. What is he? But, um, but he had so many shows on Nickelodeon, and they let him just kind of run the place. Mm -hmm. So he had to, he was forced to hire women writers. So he decided to hire these two women writers and pay them the salary of one writer, and they had to split it. So the one writer, she was a heavy set one, and the other one was um, um, a skinny one. Um, the heavy set one, she caused problems a little bit too much. She talked too much. So Dan would always yell at her and stuff and be like, You want to work here? So she knew to be quiet or, you know, she you know, ended up losing her job. Well, one day I think she saw and read or something that it was illegal what he did as far as hiring both of them and giving them one salary. So she went to um, the Writers Guild or something like that and complained. Mm -hmm. And they went after um, Nickelodeon and Dan and forced them to give them a salary. Okay. And he called her on the phone and said, are you the one that complained? And she was just like, no, like, you know, you scared Played of the man. But he was like, he knew it was her. So he had his eye on her.
And and he would if he wanted you to quit, he would force you to quit. Like make it so hard. Make it so Just hard. Or, and yeah. Okay. And he had an assistant director that was on there. Now all the kids loved the assistant director, this guy, who was nice. And he would always kind of be a bridge between Dan mm-hmm. and the kids. Okay. So when Dan would start coming down real hard or something, he would kind of step in and take the hits so that Dan wouldn't be right on the kids. Okay. Well, one day Dan wanted to get rid of him. And so the kids were like, we noticed when he left, it got worse. Mm-hmm. So he was shielding them probably from all of this. Mm-hmm. And then and then they was, even like the black kids, they was like, I don't think he liked black people. Because the way he, and the moms that was on the set, the black moms was like, I don't think he liked black people either. Because he would always make, if there was a um, a skit where somebody had to rob somebody or something, it'd be the black kids. It's, <laughs> this is in the documentary. This is all in the documentary. And we all, who told this documentary? I didn't watch Nickelodeon. I'm, I'm too old. Uh-huh. But the generation behind me grew up on Nickelodeon. Wow. I didn't know that was all going on back then. All that with Amanda Bynes and Britney um, Britney Spears, all of them, Mm -hmm. and and Justin Timberlake, all of them on these shows. Does her name have one Uh, from um, The View, the, The Raven? Yeah, Raven. All of them Nickelodeon. Nick. She had a show. Nick Cannon. He was on all that. Mm -hmm. Um, um, Keenan. Is that man still there? No, no, no. This is Keenan. This is 20 years ago. 20. No, I mean, she still has one now, but this back then she had one too. Was he there when she was there? Yeah, uh, he's there. Okay. Yeah. So the thing is, is that people probably waiting to see what Nick, Nick Cannon and, and um, Keenan and all of them have to say, because they were all there. Mm-hmm. During all this time with these um, predators and right. and Dan it's, it's all and all of them, coming out. nobody's saying nothing. nobody's saying nothing. So now that it's coming out, people are starting to say something and start to talk. This is the year of revealing everything. I know. Um, Emerald says salutations, everyone. Salutations. salutations to you. Wendy says, "Hey, girls. Hey, hey, Wendy. Wendy. hey Wendy. True says, "Hello, all. Uh, looking back on these shows, I grew up with adult eyes." Um, really makes you wonder how this was even allowed. Yeah. Now that we look back on it, like the pickle jokes and things like that, they even say if you go back to Disney stuff, there's some stuff that's in old Disney cartoons that are adult content. And the cartoonists would put it in there and laugh. That, that the kids see don't know it. Everybody notices. To see if the adults notice. And the ones who do notice don't say anything. It was one day we'll do a thing on that. Go back and look at it, and some of them were really ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. you notice some stuff. Well, they, you got to watch the documentaries, oh, wow. and they'll show you, like in Cinderella, this or in Sleeping Beauty, this. We and we go, oh my god, we didn't even see that because you know we kids. The sad thing about it, though. I expect that in an adult atmosphere. But not kids. But not in children's atmosphere. Anything with children related, children environment, even bad kids. But you know You don't expect that sexual in the But do you notice and Hollywood and the music industry still over sexualizes kids? Yeah. They still do the same thing today. Why do we allow that? I don't know. It's, it's our fault. Why do we allow it? kids mm-hmm. twerking mm-hmm. or Little girls, like even those, um, um, Bonet, the one that was, um, oh, those yeah. shows. Why don't we allow? That's what I'm saying. They gotta stop that. Yeah. They were like, uh, models even at four. But uh, they were over sexualizing them. Uh, Joan Bonet, Ramsey. Yeah, Ramsey. And yeah. then just even now, even the, um, um, Balenciaga ad that had kids in these bondage. And oh, yeah. That they, people started speaking had to out. Start saying, I guess too, when it's money. But why does Hollywood keep thinking it can do that and nobody's going to say anything? Because they can do it and nobody's going to say anything. They're going to push the envelope. That's what. That's why Diddy's house is being raided. And that's why nobody's I, putting up with it anymore. That's, you sound like Whoopi on The View. Why is it that all, all the things that Comover is doing, he gets away with it. Everybody would be in jail. Everybody. Under the jail. Uh, behind the jail. Ran over by cops, shot down. He gets away. We're living think, in a society know I where I don't even understand. You that. don't understand it. You get upset. It's like the mega people. You get upset about children and being over sexualized and stuff, but you support somebody who over sexualizes women. Yeah. And that's it, just- it's not a, and you know what? Again, it's not us to understand mm-hmm. what's going to happen. 
happen, and I've said it 150 times, is that judgment is coming down. And if that blood stain isn't over that door and you're not covered with the blood of Jesus, your head is going to roll. That show's coming. And I don't next care week. who you are. That's it. That's the classic coming next week is the Ten Commandments. And your, your head is going to roll because yes. God is done with it. He's sick of it. Yeah. He's coming back. And he says, I'm coming back with a church without a spot or a wrinkle. Mm -hmm. And you Christians are the worst. Yes. You're the most wrinkled. Out of everybody. Spots. I expect the world to be like that. But yeah. you, you say I'm your Lord and Savior. I, Why do I have event, uh, big time evangelists mm -hmm. getting ready to be brought down with multi-million dollar ministries? So the, what you just said, I guess two people tend to kind of like block world because world is going to do what world does. You expect that. But when it starts to, to peel over into people who say they know Christian God. Christian world. Yes. You're like, whoa. Whoa. Yes. This is happening in church? And, you and, and you're allowing it. You're yeah. allowing it. Yeah. I can't even tell the difference between the world and the church anymore. It's so blended. It's so blended. Yeah. I can't even tell the and difference. We're supposed to make a difference. A light. You it's twerking light. in church. Yeah, yeah. So now you don't think God, all right, that's all right. All I do is put my hands up. Right. Cover our house, cover Make us sure with the blood you, of Jesus. You are covered in your personal relationship. Because when Ooh. that judgment comes, yes. it's coming. Yes, it's coming. So that's all. Okay. But this this documentary will piss you off. You watch the whole thing? Yeah, I got to the fourth one. I'm not done with it yet. But it, it pisses you off. Because we didn't because realize this was all going we on. We didn't realize it was going on. And when people did know what it was going on, they didn't do anything about it. Yeah, that's they it. allowed the kids they to keep being away. violated, and then you hire people again. You turn your head away because it's money. Do you know some parents uh, probably allow their kids they'll push the envelope for well, their kids because Kelly. they're getting a big check for it. That's why nobody's listening to those parents or those girls from R. Kelly. Mm -hmm. You knew exactly how what was going on. Babe, how much is he paying you? You gonna take your Can child? You just... To an R. Kelly concert, we if you've seen an R. Kelly concert, he's sexualized in it. Yeah. Why would you take your 13-year-old girl backstage to meet him? Because you want her to be signed by him. Yeah. You don't care. You drop her off at the studio. I drop somebody off at the studio. <laughs> I'm just as bad as all these other nut jobs back then. Why do we do that? I don't think we were thinking about that. We did know that. I knew that. I lived in high in um But in, at that time you didn't have no, you couldn't do nothing about that. I lived in High Park. Huh? Yeah, don't say no names. Don't say names, Ma. I lived oh, in okay. High Park and I knew R. Kelly would come up to Kenwood High School and be in the parking See, lot. I didn't know that. I did. Oh, okay. Talking to your girls well, that was in high school. Well, don't you feel that? So why would I drop a high school girl off at his studio? Because you, I, for, I'm just taking up for you for that moment. You knew that there was musically. So you really thought, unless you could just say you were naive, you thought I it think was just we going to be music only. No. I, he was not going to touch her sexually. That was for music. She was going to lay down the track like we sang but we with know that. Before. We know deep down that that's not what's, what's going to happen. Kim, there's been a lot of stuff that went past us that we didn't God, know. God, we were not even and stupid. Found, no, here's the thing, though. How do we know God kept something from us because we would have maybe made it worse by opening? Because a lot of things happen in our right. old ministry. All right. We didn't even know. Yeah. Kim and I were like, do, do, do. We're waiting on something. Well, my thing is with and this one. And we didn't one, know what was going on in the, in the offices. My thing is with this one. Once you find out that somebody is messing Once you with find kids, out, yeah. why would you hire them again? Now you are obligated. It's about money, right thing. Yeah. money, money, money. But they could re couldn't they not replace him? They could replace it anybody. It wasn't like he was some some. Oh my God, you know. Or Dan Snyder working kids all throughout the night and not having these child labor laws. Unless, and who are these parents that's allowing them? Unless he had a relationship with him. Well, he's saying he. We don't know. We don't. That's know. not Allegedly, legend. Yeah. We don't know. My thing is these parents. You don't have to do that today. But today, people still feel like they have to do anything somebody tells them so that they can become famous. Everything. And, and when it's not the casting couch and it's not Hollywood, now it's social media. Mm -hmm. Now social media, everybody's doing everything for viral or on the gram. If you see somebody being violated or hurt, you don't even help them anymore. You want to get it on camera. Right. Because you get paid. 
You get right. paid when your videos go but viral. You know what? I know one of the few of the cases that I would see with the law and order um, was a few situations where the lady was um, uh, asked, but wanted more money in her job, and be- the pressure from the leader, from yeah. the from the owner, from the person in charge. They still went ahead and did what they needed to do. Yeah. Because that was the only way they can get ahead. Yeah. But they actually won their case because that person who was in power abused his power. Yeah. So people can be mad at, well, you shouldn't have went in there with him. You knew right. if he was asking you in his office or his hotel people room. People blame the victim. They, bl- they blame the victim. And I do. Do you as a victim have a, do you have some a choice? Do you as a victim of anything? There are times where, yes, you can mitigate or whatever the damage is. I don't have to leave my door open in my car like I did when I left my wallet on the windshield. windshield. Mm -hmm. That was dumb. Right. But that didn't give the person the right to break my window and take my wallet. A lot of people probably walked by and went, that's stupid. Yeah. And kept going. Why did you go? Why are you a a criminal to be the one to break the window and take the wallet? So, yes, I play a role in it. Yeah. But that does not um, eliminate the person who committed the crime. And that's how she won her case. Because if you're in power like the Nickelodeon people over children. But the parents. Parents is like, that's the safe for sake of argument. No parents can come on the set at all. Still. They was making parents the person do that. on the set. Now that is one, wrong. the one black lady whose son, they was like, you got, we don't, we want them to stay. Y'all got to go, whatever. All the parents, she was like, wait a minute, hold up. And they was telling her, you going to get your son fired because you talking too much. And so she said, so she was thinking about, she said, all right. Because she said, she started crying. She said it was drawing a wedge between me and my son. My son was starting to not like me. Like, mom, you going to... And he even said he's an adult now. He said it did. I started not liking my mom. You talking too much. You going to get me fired and I like this job. But here's another concern here. And, and I can say this because as a child, I didn't say nothing. And that was my problem. I was very quiet, stayed to myself. Right, and I was one that said everything. And I was, you know, but as a ch- my sister was very vocal. When you know as your relationship with your child, though, if they're uncomfortable, if they're acting a certain way, well, they didn't do anything. You have have a, they didn't do anything. Well, that, that's probably good. But I'm she wanted to stay so they would. The kids that were touched. Yes. I mean, when you have a relationship with your child to kind of go, babe, are you, what's going on? What did y'all and do? And I still, if y'all watched it, even though Amanda um, um, Bynes has never come out and said it, I still think something happened with her, but we don't know. Okay. Because she was on strung out on drugs and everything. Really? If y'all know about Amanda Bynes, just like Brittany. Yeah. Brittany shaved her head and went crazy. I think a lot of stuff happened to these kids, and, and they won't it. say anything. Yeah. Usher. Usher spent a year at Diddy's house. His mom let him go live there when he was a teenager. You don't think nothing happened. Uh, uh, um, Diddy made a mistake one time. He was talking. Um, if you see the video, um, Kevin Hart was, um, you know, Kevin Hart, the comedian, <laughs> was interviewing him and Usher. Uh-huh. And Diddy had his arms around us. He said, "This my, this my boy. You know, I, you know, I practically raised him. You know, I remember we would wake up and uh, get some cereal. He'd be, I mean, I mean, we'd be in different rooms. We would wake up and and Kevin and Kevin Hart win. <laughs> caught it. We will wake up and both of us get some cereal. <laughs> hey, man. He said, what, what's going on here? You know Kevin Hart being yeah, funny. Yeah. Did you just say? And, and and Usher was just like. And then why did Usher fly out recently to Russell Simmons' place where he's staying? We know all the allegations with Russell Simmons. Mm-hmm. He's still friends with Russell Simmons what? to fly out there and visit him. And his wife ain't with him. It's just him. There's too much stuff going on. Oh, Lord. And I think a lot of stuff happened to these people when they was young. That's what I think. Doors was open. I do, I do. Ooh, situations happen. I think a lot of them, even Leonardo DiCaprio and them, and they'll never tell anybody yeah. because they know that it will ruin their careers. There's some powerful people that's in Hollywood and, a, and own these um, distribution centers, mm-hmm. and they know that even at their age now, they can't say anything because if they do, they will bring down a whole ring of people. They even said, um, we don't know if this is true. This is the most recent um, with Diddy. 
um, uh, Prince um, Henry, excuse me, has something, has, name is enlisted on something. Oh, no. So now you're talking about people in the royal family? How hard does this thing go up? My goodness. Politicians, everybody. So it's like, you know, it's too much. I know. All I'm saying Are is. Are we surprised? All I'm saying is, nah. regardless of what has happened in the past, okay, I'm willing to draw a line in the sand. Okay. I'm willing to draw a line in the sand because we, again, you want the blue pill or the red pill? I'll take the one where I don't know everything. I'll take that pill. Okay. Even with our government. I'll take that. I don't want to know everything. <laughs> Let's draw oh, a line in the sand. Being, being informed and know I everything. I don't want to know everything our government has done. I don't want to know none of that. Mm -hmm. Let's draw a line in the sand. Okay? Hollywood, music industry, our government, mm -hmm. all these entities. Let's stop. Let's go forward. I don't want to know any of these dark secrets from the past. Okay. Because a lot of people that we like, we probably be shocked. Yeah, at things that have been done. Or let, Denzel, let Denzel Washington stay Denzel Washington in my head. Well, you know what? It's, I don't want to know anything it's else. It's not even about us not wanting to know because I do get it. But if it comes out. If it comes out, it comes out. Everything's done in the dark will come to light. So yeah, that's life true. may come to it that's whether true. we like it or not. We may not want the blue pill or the red pill, but God said, I'm going to give it to you and you're going to take it. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, Emerald says, the industry, that industry has been wicked since day one. They would put the stars in compromising situations and then blackmail them. Exactly. Yeah. Um, forcing them into contracts and unhealthy situations. Manipulation. I still don't understand why Usher's mom wasn't there with him. See, I didn't even read that. And we was talking about Usher. Thank yeah. you, Emerald. Yeah. Why would you go let your son go live with Diddy? Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. But anyway, we don't need and to go through this. we do have one. a Susie Sausage moment. Like you said, when you dropped off so-and-so. We had a you had a Susie sausage moment, and hopefully we've learned from that. Okay, so his oh my God, here we go. Kimberly calculated from the beginning. How do I? More so money than he start acting a fool. You know what I'm saying? One thing we know he didn't do is get on the goddamn treadmill. That's one thing we know Keenan. he did not do. Okay. Let me think. I wonder if that's why Kale has so many issues. Like, you know, Kale ended up getting on, I think, drugs and all that stuff. Like, mm -hmm. was it because he was a child star that he did work with Dan? But was Dan no, nice no. in the beginning? But once he got more power, more fame, more money, did he start acting a fool? You know what I'm saying? One thing we know he didn't do is get on the dot. He got. She didn't say how much she got. But people didn't want to mess, um piss him off because they didn't know if they was going to work again. All that, he would threaten them with that. That's why Drake said he didn't want to tell on the pickle man because he thought he would never Okay. But they said they was getting treated different. This was one. The one boy said they kept... This is the one black guy. He said they would always put him in things that make him look like a penis and stuff like that. The oh. black boy. He said he always felt uncomfortable mm -hmm. but he couldn't say nothing. He didn't say nothing. Okay. So basically the um, documentary um, it is what it is. It's a documentary about um, Nickelodeon, which a lot of people watch Nickelodeon. I didn't watch. That was this was before our time. I mean, after our time. When I got old enough, I was I was too old to watch Nickelodeon. Mm -hmm. I wasn't watching. Kenan I didn't watch it at all. Well, you way older than me, so yeah. <laughs> My stuff was Zoom, Zoom, and and. And romper room, yeah, and, you know. And what if we find out we found out Bozo the Clown and all that stuff? You know what? I was so happy it's to like, find dang. out that Mr. Rogers was a Methodist minister. Thank you, Lord. We've never heard anything bad about Mr. Thank Rogers. Thank you, Lord, for Mr. Rogers. But you would think he would be because I would be creepy. so hurt, Mr. Robinson, when um, Eddie Murphy would play him. Hey, kids. Thank hey, you. Boys and girls. We never heard anything bad about Mr. Rogers. Thank you, Lord. That's how we wanted Nickelodeon to be. Spotless. But it's yeah. not. Okay. None of it. All right. And we wonder why we got the generation we got now. These kids that was growing up on Nickelodeon was over-sexualized. And then they have kids now. And that's who the teenagers we see now. Mm -hmm. These are the teenagers, the kids, to the, the teenage kids now. Parents watched um, Quiet, I mean, um, Nickelodeon. Okay. That's our cousin's age. That's Nickelodeon. And it's still operating today, right? 
I think so, yeah. Okay. But, you know. Um, okay. So that's Nickelodeon. Let's move on to your um your um documentary that you watched. You going to read the Your documentary was I Shirley. watched the Shirley on Netflix. Uh-huh. Um, it, and I was reminding my sister, this wasn't her whole life story because uh-huh. she's written a book and she's, you know, you can really Google her and find other documentaries about her because uh-huh. her life is just so expand, you know, like she, it expands from the forties, the fifties, the fifties when she was born to now, you know, when, when she passed away. Here you got, um, the, but this one was kind of speaking said, to how this true, documentary. How true is Regina King's biopic on Shirley Chisholm? The first black woman elected to Congress. Okay. So overall, I felt it was a good documentary. Only It only talked about her run for president. Um, quickly. They didn't talk about her being in Congress? Quickly, her in Congress and a few scenes with her dealing with some of the issues being the first black woman in Congress. Because you can imagine. Charlie so you Sism, can just read through and then I'll just speak. Shirley Sism was the first black woman elected to Congress and a new movie is telling her story. Shirley, out now on Netflix, focuses on Chisholm's run for the 1972 Democratic presidential nomination and the events surrounding the campaign. Chisholm was a force in Congress fighting for her constituents while facing racism and sexism. She also influenced some of today's politicians, a few of whom are shown in the movie. Right. The biopic stars Regina King as Chisholm and was written and directed by John Ridley. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Did another congressman really confront Shirley Chisholm about pay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that really happened. You can imagine, though, as the first black woman Mm -hmm. congressman, um, I know they were saying, and some of the stuff I wrote down, in 68, there were 435 elected representatives to the House of Congress. Still is. Uh 11 of those were women. Okay. Five of, of the, the representatives were black. Okay. None of them were black women. So she was the first black first woman. First black woman. So you can imagine in 68 what she was dealing with. Congressman what, Craighead stops her in the hallway. Right, in the documentary. And says, I can't believe you make the same salary as me. Right. Yeah, because she's a black woman. So, you know, a lot of times they... And then she always made comments about this, all politicians and... All the everybody in in office and in, in in higher positions are all white men. White men. That's all you see is white men. And she wanted to break that mold mm. and like, uh, uh-uh. uh. Go ahead. While the character in the movie may be a combination of several people, which is this Glenn L. Starks guy, um, there was one Southern congressman in particular that Stark says who kept pointing out how much money she made expressing disbelief that a black woman would be in Congress. So it it looks like they took some people and combined them into one character on some of these. Some of them. Yeah. Because some of them were actual congressmen that she actually confronted. So the question is, did Chisholm and her sister really have a distant relationship? She had, um, it was four girls. She Uh was the oldest of the four. Mm -hmm. Um, The ones, her real sister playing her sister. Okay. Um, They were kind of- Yeah, because her sister's an actress too. They pushed her away because she was, you know, driven with politics and and that world. And the dad was kind of like favoritism to her because he probably saw the potential in Shirley. And the other daughters were probably jealous. It said they believed she was their father's favorite. She, yeah, she pretty much was. And she said, I can't help but be who I am. That's who I am. They said that the father gave her money. That probably put more strain on yeah, the relationship. Yeah, he did push her to, to, to... She, If you think about it, between all the four girls, she's the one that has excelled and done so much in the world of politics and helping communities. They said her and her sisters had a distant relationship. Merle um, did attend. One of her sisters attended her funeral. But the other ones did not. That's how uh, pushed away they were. Wow. Even in her marriage. Her husband was with her during her campaign. But you can kind of tell in the documentary. You all need to just watch a documentary because it just kind of tells you her her journey uh, as running for president. Because I remember I had to have been young, 12. I didn't understand it. For some reason, as a young kid, when I saw that she was running for president, I automatically... I didn't think she was going to win. Well, we knew she was going to win. Right. But the point is, I didn't understand her what the journey and the yeah. importance of it. Yeah, Even if she it. didn't win, she opened doors she for opened people. She opened doors, yeah. yeah. Just a lot of things in 
the documentary. And then when I read up about her on other documentaries, Mm -hmm. her book that she read and other information, my goodness, she had a really, the one thing I did like when they brought it out, um, and I think you might, you're probably going to read it. um, When she was elected in congressman uh, as a congresswoman, um, another congressman, a black one said, she didn't like what her assignment. They assign you to yeah, certain committees. Here, yeah. And hers was agriculture or something. Mm-hmm. And she was like, what am I going to do with agriculture? I, I'm in Brooklyn. How am I going to represent the people in Brooklyn with uh, 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 corn and all of that? Mm-hmm. So she got him. She got the Speaker of the House to change her committee. Yeah, it says here, uh, Representative, they put her on the Agriculture Committee. As a representative from Brooklyn, she thought the placement wasn't relevant to her district. Exactly. She was eventually placed on the Veterans Affairs Committee, Mm -hmm. but she did make some changes while on the Agriculture Committee. It's not shown in the film. But Chisholm did play a role in the creation of the Special Supplement Nutrition Program, WIC. See? And the expansion of the Food Stamp Program. That's that she didn't she, think that that was agriculture. She, she worked with what she was given, but she would pre- she preferred to work in another t- committee. It with, says, "What was her relationship with Barbara Lee, Congressman Barbara Lee?" Barbara Lee was didn't want to be in politics. She was writing um, a, I think she was writing a paper. She was a single mom, black mom back then, and she had to write on some politics politics or something. So she said, "I've been watching you, and I want to, you know, I, I've been following you." Um, and as far as how, how can I help? Cause she asked her to come help on her campaign. She said, I don't have no experience. How can I help? She said, you can help in so many ways. And she kind of, they pop, they brought that out in the documentary mm-hmm. and the, she followed her and learned a lot. She was instrumental in getting, um, her to meet with Huey, uh, what's his name? New uh-huh. with the black Panthers. And I didn't know in the documentary, the Huey wanted to meet with her. Um, Cause she needed him to endorse her, and um, they want he wanted to meet on neutral term, neutral grounds. Mm-hmm. Diane Carroll's house. I didn't know Diane Carroll was involved with the Black Panthers, oh. and that's how they got connected. And he, of course, going to question her and why should we why should we support you? Because mm-hmm. this was after her visit to George Wallace when he got shot five times. A lot of black people did not like George Wallace. He was so racist. Right. She still said as a Christian woman, she still wanted to go visit him. Mm -hmm. A lot of her campaign people said no. Yeah. Even the Barbara Lee character, she said no. Yeah, because George Wallace was horrible. We didn't want to sick the dogs and everything on everybody. Huey Huey even said no. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I wrote down about Huey, with the little quick talk with uh, him, he was saying, uh, hold on. Black Panther right here. Okay. Um, she was saying that he got mad because of supposedly there was a comment she made about it being a Black Panther. It's a shame that you being a Black Panther. And she was like, that's not what I said. Oh. I said, um, it's a shame that the Black Panther Party is necessary. Right. Not that it's shameful. It's, oh, okay. It's, if, if it's necessary, that's a shame that yes. we got to have a Black Panther movement. And going back to what we talked about yesterday, I'm not, I don't want to drag Candace um, Owens oh. in it. <laughs> but that's my issue I have with her. <laughs> she would say it's a shame that there's a Black Panther Party. <laughs> Where, where yeah. you should be saying, why do we have to have the black Panther yes. party? All right, go back. I don't want to bring her up Another again. thing that, another thing. Comes, but that's, it's things like that that irritates me with her. He had made a comment about, of course, you know what the Black Panther stood for. So yes. when she went to visit George Wallace, you know, he, he don't. He was like, okay, we saw you endorse, uh, go visit him at the hospital. Right. She said she would break bread with the devil if it made him more of a Christian. All right. So Look. she was pretty much saying, as a Christian, it didn't bob it didn't hurt for me to go and meet with him and let him know this may be a warning to you, sir. Right. Because you half of your body is, is handicapped. The other half, God may come and just take you all the way. So this she prayed with him. But do you know he endorsed one of her um um think policies? People that was like, uh-huh. It was something that she put out there. Let me see. Hold on, hold on. I got my notes. Well, I can read here. Oh, is it in there? Chisholm did go to the hospital to visit political rival Alabama Governor George Wallace when he was shot in 1972 in an assassination attempt. The visit was brief. It lasted 15 minutes. Her visit to Wallace, a supporter of segregation and other opposing ideologies, suppressed Chisholm's supporters and Wallace himself, Stark said. 
People were shocked, Stark says. Other politicians also went there. I think the only surprise by her going was because she was a black female. Mm -hmm. Lee was one of the people who questioned Chisholm about her visit to Wallace. Mm -hmm. Stark says Chisholm told Lee, I'm treating him the same way a human being should be treated. Did some of Chisholm's allies really switch support to McGovern at the last minute? Mm. Is that it? Yeah, go ahead. So I don't I know, know one you... thing he did endorse her later on. He backed her on a vote with a wage protection okay. for domestic workers. Oh, okay. So her coming and praying with him, oh. holding his hand, that meant something. Okay. And that hopefully cha- that changed him because he endorsed her for something that she was trying to get out oh, as okay. a congresswoman. Um, it says that yes, the film focus on Chisholm's presidential campaign follows her seeking support and delegates from the members of Congressional Black Caucus really did at the last minute give their promised delegates to George McGovern. Yeah. And that upset her, the Black Caucus. Yeah, they promised her. There was one... But then you're going to give it to him. One congressman promised her. She's been friends with him for a long time. Um, And another congressman um, uh, promised her the delegates. Because he, he was running too. Ron Dullins, maybe yeah. him, mm-hmm. abruptly losing his support and not receiving his nomination at the convention was a betrayal yeah they were good friends and that hurt her so you can tell but why would the black caucus see what i'm saying they did it for they they gave all of their delegates to george mcgovern because i forgot george mcgovern was running this was nixon's second term Mm -hmm. and um they were trying to get nixon out because they didn't like them but they still was working they still do that that's what i'm saying that's why i'm not a democrat Because a lot of these black Democrats are bought and sold. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I remember when Obama was running for president, if you guys remember, and um, Jesse Jackson was caught on a hot mic. He didn't know his mic was off. Can't stand that Negro. Yes, That's what he, he was did. saying. Mm-hmm. He didn't say he Roe. Didn't say he said Negro. that he had Exactly. Yeah, he sure got caught saying but that. But then he going to cry the night, the night of the uh, celebration. The cameras got him crying, clapping. See, they all fell in line. Thank you. Because he won. Thank you. Because it was him and... They didn't want him. In the primary, Hillary, <laughs> it was Hillary and um, him. They wanted Hillary. The Because they had things that they had to pay back to Clinton. And then, lo, lo and behold, the people wanted Obama. Yes. So they had to fall in line. Yes. They didn't want him. I know. I know. And think about it. If he had Mary... Um, married uh, Michelle Obama. Oh, they he probably would have put got more pushback. So it said, did Chisholm really run for president to be a catalyst for change? Yeah, that's Toward the end thing. of the film, Chisholm says her intention in running for president was to be a catalyst for change and show Americans that their votes do matter. Little does she know, it don't. <laughs> well, that was what she told Barbara Lee. This is back in the day. Barbara Lee was like, I don't vote and I don't want to vote. This was back in the day when we didn't know about like, politics, when we were stupid. She said, you cannot run your mouth and, and expect things to happen because you didn't vote. So she really She's got right about that. that. Now, I do agree on local, er- local. Yeah. yes. Your yeah. vote definitely matters local. Yeah. Um, who your judges are, who mm-hmm. your um, mayor yes. and, and, the, and your aldermen. In fact, and one of the guys- on I her, totally agree with one that. One of the guys on her campaign that you see in the documentary named Wesley Mack Holder, mm-hmm. he was one of her advisors. And he was an advisor for the first black mayor of New York. Mm-hmm. So he was a very good advisor, but pretty much um, her people that surrounded her, they were, she, she was, she started working with him to elect a black, a uh, black judge. Okay. And that's partly what she got is so involved in the politics. She, she she said here she was this. tired of people getting votes from the black community, but never doing anything for them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we still tired. And, if you go back up, it yeah, talks about, it. I was telling my sister, a lot of times when you watch your documentaries, they they may create a character that was not real. Yeah. I think they did that in Malcolm X with a um, lot of, yeah. Spike Lee's a lot of his. He was a combination of his friends. And I was like, dang. Yeah. Who is real and who isn't? Right. But the guy that played her, um, her um, campaign manager, um, they wanted him, I think his name was... Brian Stokes Mitchell. Okay. He's a light skinned guy. He's been in other shows. Mm-hmm. He played her campaign manager, but he was not real. Okay. He was not, he was a made up character, but they just talked pretty much 
he was trying to get her. And if this is true, because he's he's balled up in a, a bunch of other people that were trying to get her to move. He wanted her to meet with Jesse Jackson. Um, so why wasn't Khan. she meeting with any of them? She said they won't vote for me. She, she said, right. She right. Farrah Khan will not vote for She's me. She's absolutely right. As a black woman. And he, that's, and again, I said this and before. And Jesse Jackson won't vote for me. And I said this before, and everybody questioned and me. And I was like, wow. I said in the 2016 election, Louis Farrakhan backed Trump. Okay. okay. Now, people are saying he ain't saying nothing no more. Why you ain't saying nothing? He kept quiet. You either support him now or you don't. You know you don't like Biden. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying they get, what happens is they rather have anybody other than a woman. Yes. Yes. You rather have your oppressor than a woman and this to, be a, to be a, you can't even phantom. I think what's happening, he's not saying nothing. <laughs> And I'm not going after Farrakhan because, you know, he's cool. He's done a lot in Chicago, right, where we really live. But he thinks that, what's her name, um, Kamala. Kamala Harris, is going to walk in that seat because Joe Biden is hanging on by a thread. And he don't want no black And I woman. guarantee you he don't want her in that chair. Yeah, that's true. Along with all the other stuff, with the transgender and the yeah. gay stuff and all of this other stuff. He and abortions and pills being, uh, you don't even have to get a prescription. Yeah. You can't tell me that man is like, oh yeah, I'm pro-Biden. I think he's being quiet and he's thinking, I'm sitting this one out. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Because he's not endorsing him like he did last time, uh, Trump. But she brought that up and she had problems. So with it would make sense they wouldn't endorse her. Yeah. And back they, then. And they kept asking, they kept showing that, that guy who was to pretend the campaign manager character kept asking, and she said, "No, they're not going to support no, me. It'll be a waste it. of time going over there." But she actually was. But Barbara Lee said, "Huey Lewis. I mean, Huey Lewis. Lord, <laughs> we knew he. Huey knew and will Newton will the black hand. Well, well, of course he will because nobody was looking at the black. They was looking to get rid of them. So of course he and her campaign manager went." Oh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead and get the radicals. Yeah. That's get what I'm saying. Troublemakers. Yeah. So you know what, buddy? <laughs> We're troublemakers now. That's why I'm not on any party. Yeah. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. I'm a troublemaker. <laughs> I read both parties the same way. Uh -huh. The black people in the Democrat Party aren't doing anything. All they're doing is just trying to make black people vote Democrat. Yeah. And yeah. I'm not going to jump out of the frying pan into the fire and go mega yeah. like some of these other black people. Mm -hmm. I'm staying right in the middle. And if I like a candidate, I'm voting for them regardless of if they're Democrat mm -hmm. or Republican. Mm -hmm. I'm voting for the person that I like. And I don't care what party they're in. Mm -hmm. I wish most black people would do that because you would see that they never have had these congressmen and senators and stuff always about money. They've never had the black community. If if the black community is the number one thing on their mindset, mm -hmm. how come these congressmen's districts are the worst? I know. The you, most ghetto, the most project. Your area should be changing. That's one thing that Why she, am I seeing the same stuff over and over again? Yeah. And your congressman been in there for 30, 40 That's years. What, that was one of the reasons why. And then she ended up with, like you're saying, helping the agriculture committee why she was there until she switched over to the veterans and that so forth. She was very concerned about her area in Brooklyn. Thank you. And I remember I saw a um, interview with her and she gave some more illustrations of uh, dealing with racism. She said she didn't know that um, when she would go eat, cause she would eat by herself. Nobody would eat with mm -hmm. her cause you know, being a black woman and whatever. So she was always alone and she ate and she loved to eat. She had, made sure she had lunch and she loved strawberry milkshakes. I noticed that. But um, <laughs> she went to sit. They, she didn't know they had tables um, for the different delegates and where they from. Okay. Her table, she probably didn't know in New York because they were not labeled. Oh. She was sitting at a, a Southern one. Ooh. And he come over. Back in bar the Barely could talk. You had, you had wrong with our table. And she said, excuse me, sir? She said, what, what did you say? You are not on one that table. And she said, <laughs> I'm serious. You got to hear her do it. Cause he, you know, bro, very broken country. Like he from the 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 mountains, the woods, the woods. We got family she like that. Finally got you don't go on down there. How y'all go? <laughs> a kill, you know? How y'all go? Come on down here, <laughs> figure on out. And that's not 
nothing wrong with that. That's where we they had a cousin that did. We like laugh it. at it. We we it's like what? My grandmother. You know what I'm saying? You know when we sat on down there. You know when we talk about go on here, get some. Uh, <laughs> go get. You know, they were talking a different language, huh? You what? want me to come in for dinner? That's why I said I didn't come on in and get some supper. <laughs> We had my grandmother had a cousin. Mom, your like, family. She didn't like when we would crack on um, people from the hood, <laughs> from, from the hills, from the south. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, oh, yeah she yeah. was an educator, so yeah. she definitely didn't like that. But I crack on everybody, so that's why I'm saying I'm gonna crack on you too. Mm-hmm. You gonna come talk to me like that? I'm gonna crack on you. But she, she, she on down there. there. Go on, get get on down there and get some nerve. She was very wild. What? She was a wise debater, a very good. She could talk, and she didn't like no for an answer. I don't like no. What so, are y'all the things you got? What? Um, she well, from Barbados. She's from Barbados. Her sisters and her mom is uh, bar- from Barbados. Her dad is Guyanese. Oh, so I didn't she's, know that. So she's um, she's a mixed. mixture. Her okay. husband was Jamaican. Her first husband. I'm saying. I wonder if he knows she was Guyanese. Oh yeah. I don't know. Um, but he was pretty much the security guy for her because that's what his background was. They didn't marry. They 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 divorced at seven on seventy seven, mm-hmm. and she actually married the Arthur. I think his name is Arthur mm-hmm. Hardwick, and they were married until you know she passed away. He was in her campaign, and he took care. You can kind of see her Wendy, husband. Wendy's not calling it a documentary, but whatever she said, you want it, to, she said it's a docudrama. Docudrama. That's why they don't have to be real. That's true. Yeah. Oh yeah, because the documentary would be more closely. They, they got to be truth, close right? to the truth. Yeah, that was pretty much um, that made up campaign manager was really one of the made up characters, and then just her relationship. So the her. major networks would not allow her on TV. The white guy that she had come back, he was an intern for her. That's the one you said became a. He, w- he went on to be a lawyer. Oh yeah, yeah, you yeah. Saw, uh, he was on Roland interview. Martin. Yes. He was on Roland Martin. He. Um, the camp. She told the campaign. She got upset. She said, "They're not letting me speak on the major networks. Then go sue them." She said, "Go sue them." Oh, she, we hardly have any money for the campaign, and she wants us to sue. How are we gonna pay for a lawyer? That white guy stepped in. Okay. And he went and did some digging, and he got some information. Okay. Talked some talk, and they knew if they start the ball rolling and get some put a fire up under them, those networks called back so quick. Yeah, he was on Roland Martin. Mm-hmm. You said he had a he was um shy. Like he didn't want to say who he He wasn't a bragger. And you she know, told things, him he would he get things to... done. I know one thing she said, um humility. Don't ever accept things the way they are. Um don't be humble. Humility for successful people comes up as some kind of arrogance. Yes. You've done successful. You've done well. There's nothing wrong with saying that. Say you've done well. Exactly. You don't have to be arrogant about it. But don't don't be like, oh, I I, I had help. I didn't. Re-. No. No. If you did, she something. had to get him to be yes. like that. Okay. Yes. Of uh, Miss Chisholm, I was able to get you on the all be, those three networks. Be sure of yourself. Yeah. But pretty much that was it. She was a person that said, I don't like the word can't. And um, I just wanted to do some more reading on her. The, um, what's going to happen is going to happen. There's probably another documentary on her. There's like a, a real of, documentary. There's a lot of them. Okay. There's books. She's written a book. Yeah, so. So, Charlie's Very Disney. extensive background. Now, I, I ain't going to say nothing. I was going to bring up Candace Owens. Ask Candace Owens, who was the first black congresswoman. She went, oh, I don't know. She should know. She didn't know who the first black female ju- uh, justice was. Supreme wow. Court justice. Wow, Katanji. She didn't even know that. Wow. And that's now. If but she's anyway. supposed to be such a voice for the black people, right. at least know those roles in the country. Um, understand that she's my okay. Um, Emma says nothing was bad with Captain Kangaroo either. Yeah, we never heard nothing I about know. Captain Kangaroo and Bozo. I wonder. I hope not. Bozo the clown. Wendy says Regina did a good job. I, what do you think about how she did? Here's my thing with Regina. She can do no wrong. Yeah, she's a she's good a actress. Very good actress, yeah. and I enjoyed. Her in anything. She's a good actress. Um, the movie probably should have probably dealt in more with the background. Uh-huh. But other than that, I felt it was a good. You, you know, think she should get a nomination award. for something in the an Oscar? So would they do Netflix. that for this kind of TV Netflix? Show? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Emerald says maybe Wendy will do a segment on Diane Carroll and Marilyn McCoo. 
Thank you. So you heard that, Wendy. You heard that, Wendy, because I didn't know Diane Carroll. I didn't was know Diane Carroll was the Black was Panther attached to. Um, she did do Diane Carroll, but we didn't talk about the Black Panthers. And she was talking about her show when she was sitting there talking with uh, Shirley Chisholm, waiting on Huey to oh. come there. When she did the Julia show okay. and all of that. Um, Justice Frost says, "Hey, everybody. Hey, Justice." Um, Wendy hey. said, "Backstabbers." Probably talking about the Black politicians. And then that's docudrama, not a documentary. Okay, thank you. For All that. right, so okay. there you go. That's Shirley. It's a good. It's a good show. So I you would, would say you it. would suggest people watch it. Go watch it. Mm-hmm. Watch that. The mama should watch it. Our friend Terrence, our frat. Ma, you not going to watch it? Terrence Howard. Oh, he's in there. He's he plays the guy that she ends up marrying. Oh, okay. At the end. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. Do you have um? You got Santez on the thumbnail, right? Yeah. Okay. So let the me Santez. talk about him real quick. Um. Governor, Florida governor signs a law restricting social media access for children. Florida Republican governor, that's, again, they had a whole line of people to represent the Republican Party, and they chose Trump. Trump. Mm -hmm. Even DeSantis you could have chose. You can't get no more conservative than DeSantis. Nope. But anyway... Florida Republican Governor Ron DeSantis signed a bill into law banning children under age 14 from having their own social media accounts on Monday, according to a news release from governor's um, office. 14 and 15-year-olds will be allowed to have accounts with parental consent. In addition to restricting social media accounts for children, the legislation also places restrictions on pornographic websites. So... Pretty much what he's saying is if you are under age, 14 and under, or 15 and under, whatever, you parents have to, you have to have uh, your social media site with your parents' consent, which probably means they probably got to put your ID or something in, or, you know, kids probably just going to steal their IDs. Yeah. You know, or they'll steal the IDs or something, yeah. or whatever. But anyway, yeah. it puts more of a restriction on it. And it also will probably allow these websites or these social media sites. If they notice that you're doing stuff that is off or whatever, they can close your site down quickly and they can notify the parent because Mm -hmm. you're supposed to have consent and you're really supposed to be monitoring your child, what your child is looking at and what they're doing. Now, I don't have a problem with that. I thought I would, but I don't. Because these kids have gotten ridiculous on these social media sites. Did you hear the? Um, they were talking on the news to um, the congressman about the TikTok. Yes. He said they were getting letters from kids saying that they were going to take their lives See? if they take away TikTok. Yeah. He said we had to take all those letters and emails seriously. Because a lot of times people just talk and bark. No, no, they serious. Don't take TikTok. No, no, they're serious. Uh, I would just leave this sir. No, no, they're for real. That's their outlet. That's what, I think that's what DeSantis is saying. Are we that crazy? It, is, it has gotten that out of hand to where these kids' lives are these social media platforms. I told you they film fights. They don't even, like, back in the day, you know, people don't, you know, stop, break it up. Nobody does this. Everybody with a camera. Filming people fighting, filming people getting hurt, filming things that they want to go viral so bad. And, you bring and that's what we we, everywhere we started off by talking about Nickelodeon. It was so yeah. far on the other side. Now you almost, they go an extreme on the other side Cause I because feel, things have gotten out of hand. Now he's doing what he can for what? Which platforms? Because TikTok is well, hard to manage. Well, he's saying that this is a law in Florida. And I'm sure other states are, excuse me, going to follow, follow suit. suit. In Florida, if we catch any of these accounts, because you know he's going to have people looking, that don't have parental consent or we notice that it's off, whatever. No, they're fining. They're going to fine these, um, um, no, no, the social media sites. And it's thousands and thousands of dollars. Well, the social media sites is Elon and and Mark. I don't have it here, but it's like, um, I think it's like, y'all look it up. I think it's like 50,000 per incident. It's it's a number so high that they know that it would have to take somebody like Elon who would say, I'm not, I don't care. Go ahead and sue me. You think that's going to happen? They can't be Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg is not going to pay that. He's going to, he's going to put that consent on there. Mark Zuckerberg ain't paying no fifty, sixty thousand dollars per incident. 
He gonna be like, nah, I'll put it what on there. What about the accounts that's already out there? Though? They gonna dismantle the ones that's already out there. What do you mean? The ones that's already there gotta be erased. That's so you got all those data. followers. You kept telling people to to download pictures and stuff and don't use that as an archive. The next thing that's gonna come, I'm telling y'all, is gonna be adults. So if I was you, I've been saying this, I'm don't have any pictures or videos. They're doing what China's doing now. Don't have any pictures or videos on your account that if it gets shut down, you would be you would be upset because you can never get them again. Wow. Take these pictures and download them. You can do that on Facebook now. Mark Zuckerberg is allowing you to download your pictures. Wow. Download your pictures and put them on that mic that uh, micro uh, feast. Uh -huh, is that what it's called? Chip, the little, yeah, the, uh, whatever that is. Um, dip, the whatever. Those Not called. don't put them in the cloud world, called? like Dropbox and stuff like that. Uh -huh. Put them on that, uh -huh. on that thing. Uh -huh. So, um, drive, 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 whatever that thing is. Uh -huh. That's sad. We don't even know what it is. I know what it is, but I don't. Know I got what it them. Is. I just don't. Yeah, uh, I got a bunch but of them. But start downloading pictures and putting them on there. Okay. Because next they're gonna, I think they're gonna, they doing the kids now. But you know DeSantis in Florida, he's going to come after adults soon. Because it says here he's coming after pornographic websites. Now, when you go on these websites, you just click on them, which kids can just do. But in the future, it's going to be a thing over it. Whitehouse.com, I think, is one. And you got to show your driver's license to go in. Watch somebody steal somebody's driver's license and just use that for their porn. <laughs> You got to really hold on now to your identification because it's going to be more scams and more fraud, fraudulent. Did activities. you see that video? It was smart, but he didn't think it through. In the airport, this guy it had to be a black guy. I hate that. He was sitting next to people, and when they were looking at their tickets, he take a picture of their boarding pass. And then when it was time to go in, because apparently the machine doesn't say your chair, they he would slide, he would show his phone, and they scan it, and he'd go into the airport. <laughs> Did he get caught? Well, this is what happened. <laughs> he didn't think it through. Okay. So he goes to, when he first comes, he goes in the washroom, and stays there until the the thing pulls away from the building and starts taxiing. Then he comes and he looks for an empty seat and he sits down. Scott. But he didn't think it through because the plane was over. <laughs> so when he came out the washroom, he's walking up and down the aisle. He's trying to find a seat. And the lady store that says, Ken, is there something I can help you with? <laughs> Well, I'm trying to find my seat. Well, I'll help you. Because we're getting ready to go up in the air. And you need to be seated down. There wasn't one empty seat in the whole place. She went right to the captain. Pop, turn this thing around. Oh, no. He don't have no seat. He's a stowaway. <laughs> they turned the plane oh, around. Oh, my God. Pulled back up to the building and the uh, Homeland Security was waiting there to take him off the plane. He should have done what we do. We asked if it's a full plane. He should have went. That's what it was a good idea. And they said no good. one thought about it, so now they got to put stuff in the place because oh, he no. thought about it. They never, nobody thought. Now, he's probably been doing it and getting away with it. Some their phone to go buy the ticket. Well, person. that's what he was doing. Some he was taking up, and they showed the 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 airport um, uh, camera uh -huh. showed them sitting next to people <laughs> right there looking at their uh, uh, what is that thing boarding pass, <laughs> and he's pretending he's taking a picture of himself, but <laughs> he's taking a picture of their boarding pass. <laughs> that is so smart. He should have asked them. We would always ask because we don't want anybody sitting. Can you imagine somebody sitting between me and Kim? He should have said, is this we plane always full? Asked, is this plane full? She said, so yes, ma'am. So I ma think he's full. been doing it, but he got caught because the plane was full. If the plane wasn't full, he would have came out the washroom and sat down in any empty exactly. seat. Exactly. <laughs> the plane was full. <laughs> he had no seat. Oh, man. That was smart, though. Yeah, he messed up on that one.
He could have kept it going. I guess I say all this to say people are coming up with ways to do things. Yeah. So if you got somebody saying they got to show an ID to get on a porn site, yeah. I'll just steal somebody's ID. Mm-hmm. And put Hector Gonzalez thing in there every time I want to go on the porn. <laughs> more and more identity theft will happen. Yes. But that's ushering in future. Where they put it on you. Yeah. 666. You go beep and be under your skin. Well, they'll rip beep. your arm off then. Then they'll take your hand, cut your hand off. Or be on your forehead. Beep. You cut somebody's head off. Remember we saw a picture where he cut the man's head off and, and put it up and against put the your eye. It was the eye thing. Yeah. Put it up against <laughs> oh, the thing. No. Oh, no. I, got, I want to be in heaven then. I Thank don't want you. to deal with that. But I'm that's sorry. what DeSantis, he's making oh, He's cracking wow. down on Florida. No kids. If you are under 14 or 15, you should have a social media Dang, he's site. He's taking everything away from, he's not even teaching them history, black history. They can't have um, uh, drag queens teach Look, them. I don't or, like. Or read to them. <laughs> I don't like DeSantis. But it's almost like when you hear about these stories on the far left, they almost force people like him to become more. When you're having kids play slaves and picking cotton, that's why he don't want it in school. Don't even teach it. So that's what I'm saying. You I can't. You got can we have a middle ground here? If the if the politicians are not doing their job, that's why Abbott over Texas is doing his thing. He's doing his own thing with the migrants. Well, you saw they bum rushed him one time. You saw that last week, no, right? No, what happened? Over a hundred some migrants bum rushed and and and, and came and just over, ran, on in. ran, and they had to try to keep him out. And um, Charlemagne the guy said, one hundred and two, three hundred. Charlemagne the guy said, "I'm surprised they didn't shoot him. They can't." That's why I'm I'm waiting on DeSantis to deal with the Haitians. I can tell you one we thing. We are not going to sit here and watch you massacre a group of I people. I can tell you one thing. If Trump becomes president, he they will be will. shot on sight. He will, yeah. Well, I don't know if the military would take. Heat. No, they will shoot them. Because that is an act of violence. You, actually, they technically, they were supposed to. That's oh, why Charlemagne wow. said he was surprised they didn't. Wow. If you cross over the border, if you go to another Literally, country, yeah. and you run across, they'll shoot you down where you stand. I was surprised that black soldier didn't get shot down when he ran into North Korea. <laughs> well, he hid, didn't he, with the group? No, know. no, he hid with the group. No, but when he got group. there, got there, though. They oh. had him. Didn't they grab him? Or some, I don't know. They got him, though. You don't just run across. They didn't take his life, though. Yeah. They could have, but... But yeah, wow. so that's the that's the if Trump becomes president, they will be shot. But they showing he already got you always see the mega memes right now. All the mega memes are showing alligators. They got them, they got alligators in army uniforms. The memes. You know what? <laughs> because they saying once Trump becomes president, it's all over. All these alligator army uh the alligators in army suits are gonna be released into the water. And you don't even have to shoot nobody. They'll oh, take out anybody that, that comes so in there. Awful. It'd be like gladiators where you see all the people come in the middle and they had to fight for their lives. The lions will come out and, and you people be sitting there going, yeah. But see, when you show yeah. stuff like hundreds of people running across, that just makes people say more. You need to put more patrol and do more on the border. And then if they do take action and start shooting them, the migrants will go, ooh. Maybe I won't be running in that. That's crowd. what they'll do. Hmm. And Abbott, don't put it past Abbott. He may say, "Don't shoot everybody," but you got to take one or two of them out to, to, to make a to bring a to, to make a point. So I don't know. Okay. We don't know what's going to happen. All right. Okay. So that was it for DeSantis. Um, you always want to know who Charlemagne the God's donkey of the day is, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Now I didn't even look at this story, so I don't even know what this is. But this guy gets donkey of the day. It said House Dem spurn leading Senate candidate after he uses a racial slur. Six House Democrats are spurning, is it spurning? S P U R N I N G. Their colleague, Rep David Thorne, he's a Democrat mm-hmm. of Maryland, okay. the front runner for, in Maryland's Democrat Senate primary after he used a racial slur to attack Republicans during a re- recent House hearing. In the days after he used the slur, Tron's opponent in the Democratic primary, uh, Prince George's County Executive Angela also Brooks, received endorsements from Democratic representatives Barbara Lee. We just talked about Barbara mm-hmm. Lee. Yep. Yvette Clark, Gregory Meeks. Um, that's our that's Pastor Meeks. Oh that's no, that's New somebody York. else. That's New York. York. Joyce Betty and Jasmine Crockett. 
according to this news article. We describe um, they supporting a, this other person because this guy, I guess, used a racial slur. Um, it came after he used the term jigaboo. <laughs> you know what? He called them jigaboos? Why would you do that? An insulting and contemptuous term for a black person that date back to the early 1900s. You know what? So this Republican jigaboo, that is the tax rate. <laughs> he called him a Republican jigaboo. jigaboo. Oh my goodness. That's like at college. I told you about the story when we told we called one of the girls a white N-word. Ooh, she she says, got so mad at us. It's just completely faulty by people who have never run a business. Tron said while talking to a black federal official during the Thursday House hearing on President Joe Biden's 2025 budget request. <laughs> so what happened to him? Well, he got shot. It's shunned. just being okay. They not, they not but he's a donkey him. for saying that. Yeah, you don't say those. You, you, if you, it's like you use any any term. Period. Even on the right race. But why would you, a white person? Because if you use, use the Latino term or the Asian term for just a group of of Republicans, but why would a white person stupid. use that word? I know. I thought he said the N word when you said slur. And then I'm just going to meet I didn't, think, I didn't think a white person would say jigaboo. I'm just going to briefly mention uh, when you do the prayer, pray for the Baltimore people who, that Baltimore bridge incident where yeah, the- we uh, got our family. We have family that live there. Cargo ship. You said that we, you read in the thing that it lost power. And yeah. that's why I ran into it. Because everybody power. was like, why did, this, run into why did this cargo like ship run into this bridge? We lost power. That's what they're saying. So they got to investigate that. So they'll investigate that. Yeah. And that... Um, the family, the people that were... Yeah. Uh, and I think seven or eight, the count is up oh, to or whatever. Um, people that still they still can't find that are oh, missing. That's sad. I, the, I hate you say a light at the end of the tunnel. But it was good it happened at one thirty in the morning. Yeah, because just, hundreds of people go over this go bridge over all my, my, day. Our family does use that bridge to go to work. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are saying, you know, that's the light at the end of the tunnel. So pray for know. that, the family. Mm -hmm. And then we talked about briefly yesterday with um, uh, Diddy, his house getting raided, mm -hmm. and um, he told my my mother said she saw on the news. He said he gonna co cooperate. He has no choice. So we'll see how far this goes. Well, oh, that's fine. Where he we'll is, see he's, guilty, he's you're it's, innocent to prove exactly guilty. allegedly these these are alleged uh, allegedly right um, these are alleged like alleged uh, whatever so he has to you know what that's why you go to court of law mm -hmm. so prove your innocence and I you know they right. treat you like you're guilty though I hate that his lawyer said that they was um being extensive now I'm not a person yeah I am I do that whole FBI and the Homeland Security and. They didn't need to do that much of a presence. It wasn't like they was arresting nobody. They oh, was coming like and looking for something. Or something. You like know, conspiracy theory would say happened on the same day that Trump was got his um bail or not bail, but his um whatever that amount of money lower reduced, mm -hmm, reduced. from five hundred million to one hundred and seventy five million, mm -hmm. so he can appeal. Sonny said if it he took, loses it took, his appeal, he still has to pay yeah, you still got to pay the five hundred million. Man. But the funny thing is, is that this happened. The same day that Trump's thing happened, nobody's talking about Trump's thing. Everybody ran the news on Diddy. Mm. So some people think, was this a um, way of, this plan. was this planned to kind of, because you know, people follow shiny Bring objects. Bring the spotlight off of us. We follow shiny objects. Nobody's talking about Trump. Everybody was talking about Diddy yesterday. And then today, the bridge thing. So and that's then the, day. the breaking news for today. Yeah, so... I don't know. Conspiracy theorists would say something is up with that. Mm -hmm. um, let me go back. We'll read this and then um, the funny. Um, Wendy says, when I did Diane Carroll, I didn't find anything on the Black Panthers. Hmm. So maybe let's see. Cause Unless that's, that's another made up one. But it didn't but say they it on the But they can't make news. that up. Yeah. You can't make up a celebrity and say she was tied to the Black Panther. That's true. Because they met at her house. Right. You can make up a fake person's name and say that. But maybe, they said Diane Carroll. Maybe if you look into Shirley Chisholm's background oh, and yeah. see if if she went to Diane Carroll's house. But they could have scrubbed that, right? Diane Carroll's um, um, record, record because that is not good to be tied to the I Black know, Panthers. I know. And they wanted, she had a TV show on a major network. Yeah. She was black, the darling girl, black spotlight. 
So you can't be tied to the Black Panthers. So they could have scrubbed their history. That's true. Now it would have to be in Shirley Chisholm's Thank history. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Wendy says, uh, I mean, Justice says it's all about the numbers. I think we make up less than 15% of the population. Yeah. The schools need to block access to specific websites while they're in school. Yeah. I know at my job, my old company, they would block certain websites that our, our IT team would, would make it where we couldn't do social media yep. platforms. Our department got, um, what is the word, when you're allowed to right? for that reason? Because we were advertising. So, so we let's, had to look at these social media platforms. So let's look at um, the funny. The funny. I didn't show my cargo. That was my little cargo. Yeah, that bridge. Ooh, he See just that? went right into that bridge. And it crumbled the whole, our infrastructure, I keep telling y'all, our infrastructure is horrible. It's horrible. We have no, our, they laugh at us in other countries, our infrastructure. Well, that's what I was telling you about Japan. One big weather thing come or something, and our bridges and everything are falling. Well, Japan had the tsunami, the, the what you call it. Tsunami. Or, yeah, yeah, so they've had some major uh, earth things that they can't control. But I was telling you about, there's a. a, a that a, pothole thing? Yeah, the substance they use to, to pave their streets. Yeah. It covers the streets, and you don't have to redo that yeah. every year. But see, we don't do that. Our infrastructure, because they know that that creates jobs, to have somebody keep coming out every year filling a pothole. Oh, my but, So they don't care that your car will fall in one day or if a big earthquake comes. That's what I'm saying. I, it's, We're like, it's, we can't use that same material to put tar down on our streets that will last for years. Look, guys, you want the blue pill or the red pill? Oh. God. You want the blue pill or the so red pill? So it's a lot pill. of politics involved, You want too. the blue pill or the red pill? We want to keep the job. We want to keep the uh, contract. And this is when I was talking about Diddy's home being raided. His mm-hmm. lawyer was saying they didn't need all of this. Well, the that house. was that was done. It's well, he was home. saying he was saying it was done to uh, create a diversion from looking at something else. Oh, okay. He may not be off on that. Well, okay. Either way. But here's our funny. I always try to do something funny. This pug loves to scream. Now, you went away from one in a Dotson. Here he is. Yeah. No, a pug. Remember, you wanted a pug. I want a pug, too. And there's a Dotson. They got both. Both of them is in, they in, this person has both. Oh, my God. Now, this pug screams. Mom, later on, when you watch this, you'll laugh. Is he the same one that was screaming on another video? No. She was um, getting ready? Was no, he? no. This is a different Okay. One. Okay. Ah! <laughs> Come to the door. He'll bark at the at the at the mailman, but he wasn't. Rah, rah, rah. Somebody says, um, "Love him," but he would have to go. Yes. Somebody says, "Why does he scream instead of bark?" Yes. Somebody said the other dog is like, "Can you get rid of really? him? He's messing up my my piece." <laughs> Somebody says, "I have three pugs and none of them scream." See, he's spoiled. 
Somebody said, my pug did this every time I came home from work. Well, that was it. After you came home from work, that was it. Did he want the attention, I guess. But why scream? Yeah. I don't think they bark. Do they bark? They they bark. Do they bark? It was one dog they said don't bark Somebody said, I have a pug. He never screams like that. Thank you. Thank you, people. Somebody says, I have a pug. He's quiet as a mouse. Thank you. This dog is spoiled. Just like a kid acting up and having a tantrum in the floor of a store. People be looking at him like, I don't think so. Somebody said I was going to get a pug, <laughs> but. Say he's like Trump. <laughs> he is. Somebody says I was going to get a pug, but no. And then somebody says, no, no, they're not like they're this. They're not like that. Everybody talking about how the other dog is looking like. Yeah. Oh, she got both dogs. Those are both the dogs we want. We wanted a pug and we wanted a Dachshund. Aw. A lot of people say they get rid of him. Yeah. He, she, and I guess she's just doing it on video to see that we're all supposed to be like, ooh, ooh, ooh that's funny. Ooh, Somebody ooh. said, I feel sorry for the Dawson. Me too. I do too. <laughs> but when y'all gonna roll up a little bit and tap that little no, bottom. No, no. Well, as soon as she first got you should have been taught not to do this. Look at the No! The Dachshund is no, like... No, no, no. Man. So, I wouldn't do all that. So you can watch it later, Ma. Oh, no. And I'm thinking every, all of y'all listening to us now. Uh-uh. Okay. Wendy, I know you wouldn't let your dog do this. All right. Oh, we don't goodness. know what... Uh, uh, what is it, Sherlock? Sherlock. What's Sherlock? Sherlock don't scream like that, do we? Okay. Okay. Uh, don't forget to get our book, 100 Family Friendly Jokes. The link is in the description, and the book is on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Go Thank ahead. You. Close us okay. out. You said pray for um, the bridge people. Yeah, in Baltimore. Father God, we give you glory and honor, oh God. We always just want to give you the praise each and every day that we have the activities of our limbs and even able to even say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Um, we just pray, continue to pray for those that's in the chat room, all of the people that chimed in, whether they said anything or not, or, or those who will listen to us even later. We just pray over those people, the families that they're representing, oh God, protection in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, oh God. We thank you for this platform that uh, that gives our opinions on things and let people know what's going on in, in the politics, world of politics and entertainment and sports. Um, but we definitely want to pray for the situation that happened today in Baltimore. A lot of us have family, some of the people that are even living there, oh God. But we're praying, oh God, for those members, those people that were driving and that they are not able to be found. We pray for the families that may have lost some loved ones that were driving. Um, I think it was around one in the morning, oh God. Um, we're grateful that a lot of people were not driving at the time, oh God. But for the families, oh God, that were affected, oh God, we pray blessings and comfort for them right now in the name of Jesus, that they'll be strengthened, oh God, and that every member, every person will be found in that situation, oh God, and as they continue to investigate and see what happened. We even pray that the damage that's been done, oh God, that it be repaired quickly, oh God, because um, it will hold off a lot of situations with people going, what? getting back and forth to their jobs and in other areas of that Baltimore area, oh God. So we thank you for that. We pray for the Diddy situation, oh God. You know all things, oh God. You know what's going on. And what's done in dark will come to light. So if Diddy is innocent, it will show itself and it will be proven itself. His lawyers or whoever will be defending him, oh God, um, will show proof that he is innocent. If he's guilty, oh God, let, let, let ever justice be done that needs to be done, oh God, and that he'll learn from this and hopefully be humbled through all of this and, and the situations that's going on in his life and he, who he has affected, oh God. Um, we just pray that your will be done in all of that. Improve or remove in the mighty name of Jesus. And we continue to pray over DeSantis. Some ideals he'll come up with that's protecting children. And we know we all want our kids protected, especially when it comes to social media outlets and platforms that are out there. And a lot of families are not, are taking the, their, their kids' um, <clears throat> involvement with these um, social media platforms very serious. So God, so maybe he's on to something. We don't know. Because a lot of times we're quick to, Anything he brings up, we're like, no, but 
your your will may be done in this because it'll show that you know families get more involved, parents get more involved, and in, and in, in just protecting our children and their rights, so God that they would not be taken advantage of. We continue to lift up the whole Nickelodeon thing, Lord. A lot of us are from old school and we don't remember these kind of things happening. We don't know what's going on in the back back end, oh God, but. Like I said earlier, what's done in dark will come to light and justice will be done. And those who have been offended or hurt, oh God, through all of this, that they will find uh, justice um, to protect them. And then whatever, whoever has messed up in that Nickelodeon family and, and the workers, oh God, will justice will come to them in the name of Jesus. We will forever give you glory and honor in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. So I just started doing the pictures because I think I'm going to start pulling out the prayer at the end and putting that separate. Okay. Like I do the other stuff. Okay. Because I think people need to pray. <clears throat> and they mm, need especially to. Especially what's going on mm-hmm. now in our world. Yep. So that's why okay. I do that. Okay. All right. So don't forget to like. Oh, did anybody say anything? I think Justice Ross said her comment. No, she the said school. the blocked access. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Always believe. And that was another Another Woods Report. See y'all later. See you later, TikTok.